Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. Frank? Is he all right? He's not breathing. Ever since I was a kid, I've always been on my own. Frank, get your things or they'll be left behind. I'm not going. Dad will come for me. Frank! Frank! I never had any reason to care about anyone else. Come here. Do you always tell people what to do? Yeah. What happened up at Bullhead? You stop breathing for a few minutes. Maybe you survived the accident to find the meaning of your life. Michael, he has leukemia. He has this obsession with the television series Chips. I was really hoping that Michael could have a father figure around the last week of his life. A great man once told me that if somebody needs help, give it to him. I promise you, I'll get you your wings. You'll have to help me, Officer Frank. Maybe you're helping me. I failed you, Frank. No, I never thought that I could make a difference. Why do you keep coming back? I don't know. A simple act of kindness can have a ripple effect. We can help other kids one wish at a time. Now, if I can do it, anyone can be a hero. My real motorcycle cop. Yes, you are. And I'm your partner. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 456. Releasing September 5 on the Wonder streaming platform is Wishman, the true story of Frank Shankwitz, the founder of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, who during his time as a police officer in Phoenix, Arizona, encountered a young boy dying from cancer, which led to the formation of one of the most recognized nonprofit charities around the world. An incredibly touching story that speaks to the power of purpose and persistence, especially during hard times. Wishman also marks the, you know, breath, I think breakthrough leap performance by Australian actor Andrew Steele. I'm glad to say he joins me now on the podcast. Andrew, thank you so much for your time. Of course, thanks so much, Matt. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful film. And um, thanks for your 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 praise for my part of it. But it is I'm very much just a small part of such an incredible organization, and we're thrilled to to have it be able to be shown and for Frank's story to be told, which was really his wish. So it's really interesting how the part kind of came to you. So you were at a conference in the States and one of the speakers was Frank Shankwitz. And I'll let you take it on from there. You meet him and then what happens? Yeah, so I, I approached him just to kind of say, you know, ha, what an incredible organization. I just wanted to kind of shake his hand, and mm. and I ended up mentioning that I that I ran a, a socially conscious film festival myself um, called Flicks for Change, and we focus on films with important social messages, and invite all the nonprofits that work in those spaces to come and be a part of panel discussions and and have uh, interactive exhibits in the foyer and what have you, so people can watch the what's on the screen be inspired want to do something about it and then we connect them with the difference makers on the ground and so i was telling frank this you know what, what i'm doing and what the mission was and he kind of just oh stop me there i think somebody like you should play me in this movie hey greg this guy should play me in the movie i'm like yeah where's greg hey greg <laughs> so that was the kind of introduction and it was like you know the the moment, you know, I went to America as an actor and, um, you know, always kind of constantly hustling for that. But it was the moment that I kind of shifted my focus and creating a platform for these, you know, raising the vibration of, you know, different filmmakers so they could have somewhere to show their content. Um, it was the, yeah, the moment that, that I changed my focus to serving myself that, you know, the universe, you know, dealt me an incredible hand and, met Frank and I still auditioned for the role, but after my audition, um, the writer, director, Theo Davies and the lead producer, Greg Reed, 
they basically said, look, they had a quick chat with each other. They go, mate, you're, you're the guy. So who do you want to be opposite? Like, you know, I'm like, what? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're the guy. Yeah, you're the guy. And it was like just this kind of handshake deal that like was like, it was a year later that we shot the film. So as you know, with indie, indie films, you're always looking for more money. But I was, so I was looking for more money, but I wasn't looking for too much more money that, you know, Matt Damon would now take my role. Right. Uh, so it was, uh, it was a, you know, great opportunity and, uh, you know, stoked that it's that getting a re-release. When taken on the, on the role of a Frank Shank, you have to really take on different kind of like, you know, new, learn new skills essentially. So he's a policeman. He's like a, like a, with a motorbike and such. You have to learn to ride a bike. You have to learn to fire a gun. And those things I'm sure will come to you with all the training and such. But what I'm really interested in is the accents because Frank's a really interesting guy in that he was born in Chicago. He was there for a little bit. And then his mother kind of moved him around different places and then they end up in Arizona. So he's kind of got like a, like a mixed bag of, of kind of like an American accent. As for yourself, how do you kind of approach his kind of like his cadence in his accent? Because it is very specific to who he is as a person. And it is like 180 from what you are as a person being an Aussie. So how do you go about you know, getting that together? Yeah, right. Well, luckily I had a year to work on it and uh, got to speak to Frank, obviously. like over, I actually had him read, read the script. And uh, so, so I'm like, well, here we go. This is the cheat code for the accent. How is it going to sound? But the interesting thing is, when you read something and you say something, it sounds different. Mm -hmm. So he was giving me the read for what he sounds like reading it, but to get him to embody, it was a different kind of thing altogether. But, um, you know, so that was a little taste of the accent there, but, but I did have a great dialect coach and, you know, I worked kind of phonetically, I broke down the script and just different sounds. And, but I better fit, fit him, like, you know, the Prescott accent and, also frank's accent as you said he did move around so it's kind of doesn't matter if there's a p particular sound from an area it really is you know what does frank sound like and yeah. how can i embody that and then also how can i learn as much of that and the placement in my mouth and how it feels coming out of my mouth but then when i'm when we're rolling to forget that, like to learn it so well that it's just there. So then I can think about what the moments are and the given circumstances on this, in the scene that I'm acting in. So I'm not like, well, Frank would be sounding like this, blah, blah, blah. But it's kind of like, well, I am Frank. So this is what I'm saying. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's kind of like learn all that and then just throw it away. And, you know, it, it don't, don't get hung up so much on every little sound, but to learn it well enough to that, uh, that, that that's not a problem. The Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is brought to you by T Public. T Public is the world's largest marketplace for independent creators to sell their work on the highest quality merchandise. With over 1.2 million designs, T Public is sure to have something you love. The other interesting thing about the film is that Frank was really insistent that it was filmed in Prescott, um, Arizona, which is like his hometown. It's pretty much a place where he founded um, Make-A-Wish, his place where he got married, his place where he made a family, and, and ultimately, unfortunately, a, a year or so ago, was a place where he also passed away. Um, mm. Filming there in Prescott, well, how important is environment to the formation of a character in a, in a film? Because I'd imagine that maybe if you filmed this somewhere like in California, it could have worked, but having that little extra caveat of being in the being, walking the same uh paths walking being in the same places in rolling down the same streets that frank was in would have helped a lot in the psyche of creating a character like that yeah no definitely the nostalgic you know being able to go to to the bars where you know he was frequenting and and you know where different issues things you know the courthouse steps and stuff were was where it all happened so that was really incredible and to see the townspeople come out and, you know, it's interesting. There are a lot of people in Prescott didn't even realize that Frank, who started Make-A-Wish, was from Prescott. So they're mm -hmm. like, what are you shooting? I said, oh, this is the story of Frank Shankwich. They're like, who's that? And like, it's the guy that started Make-A-Wish. And he's like, wow, they, that happened here? Like, um, so, but yeah, to, to, I mean, you know, everything helps you get into character, whether it's the accent, whether it's, you know, figuring out how he walks, the, you know, what he clothes he wears, what shoes, like, but yeah, very much the surroundings do do make you know make you take note. But I mean, I was really lucky that Frank was there every step of the way, 
Um, and you know, he was there, the midnight shoots, even when his doctor were like, you need to go back to hospital because you're not doing well. Uh, he's like, no, no, I got a midnight shoot to get to. So he'd get out and, uh, you know, he was, his health was up and down, but he had good, a good two years after the film came out to, um, tour around with it. And, um, he was a super giving guy of his time and really humble, never took a dollar from make a wish. And, you know, he was on a, he was a, he was a police detective, like, you know, it was, uh, doing undercover with the hell's angels rolling in the dirt every day. So he looked like he'd been out all night mm. checking under his car every morning for a bomb, like, you know, and then, you know, having started make a wish, which is just doing incredible things. And, and now you can watch it on uh watch uh, a wonder dot watch and 40% of all of the, uh, of the takings of that go directly to make a wish Australia, which is incredible. And then, you know, by basically watching a movie, you can help grant the next wish. That is very true. You know, what's really interesting to me when I was taking notes for the film is that it's a movie, like I said, it's a movie about purpose. It's a movie about persistence. I also found it to be a film where a a familiar theme that kept coming up is that as fathers and sons. Um, So you have Frank himself. He was, um, through through the actions of his mother, um, was estranged for his father for a very long time. Then he has the succession of mentors. There's another interesting kind of scene where Frank first meets the little boy who, whose wish is to like to be a part of like a, a, a police force essentially um his mother says look that his dad's not around and he needs like a like a, a a father figure around which Frank kind of takes that takes that role as well um is that something that you found as well in, in the making of the script because I just found it was such an interesting theme uh, where kind of like the absence of fathers kind of like made these kind of men especially Frank especially kind of like a really self-sufficient person but kind of like a really kind of like closed in person as well and in kind of like opening up to the possibilities of having a father figure and himself being a father figure kind of like leading down this path of, of uh you know of, of purpose and persistence that was spoke of before yeah look I, I think you hit the nail on the head there very very uh very succinctly uh um yeah i yeah i do think you know his not ha- not having that father figure present in his life did close him off and then sent him down, you know, and also being, being a cop, like, you know, it's, it's a lonely job on the, on the highway. Like you're sitting there for hours at a time in the blistering heat and like, and the cold, and you're just sitting there and like no real human interaction until somebody's doing something wrong or they're, they're challenging you. And, you know, then that's a real thing. You got to, you, you can't, you can't be a, a smiley, open, caring, like, well, I mean, you can be, but this wasn't the version of himself mm. until he does meet, you know, Michael um, and everything changes. I don't know if you noticed, but from that's really, those scenes are the only ones, scenes where he kind of smiles or yeah. has a bit of, you know, it really, you know, it, it, it allows him to be youthful as well, which, you know, he always, growing up, he always had to, you know, fend for himself and, and you know look out for himself so um but yeah no that 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 father figure is very important in informing a way a a person is and his relationship with his mother as well you know i would imagine that informed his relationships with 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 women as well and and uh you know it's all so formative and to, to see where he came from it's so incredible to see what has flourished out of out of those humble beginnings to be make a wish as we know it today the thing that i find about wish man and your own kind of like flicks for change film festival and and other things that you're you're, you're involved with is that you really want to put out a kind of like a, a feeling of positivity through film and filmmaking and stories I remember I was listening to an interview you gave back in 2019 um, at one of the premieres of, of, of um, Wishman in the States. You know, talk about how, you know, it's we live in such a divisive kind of place right now um, that we need movies like this to kind of like bring about, bring, bring more unity. Um, it, now here in 2022, it's even, like I, I can arguably say it's even more divisive, even more negative um, with all the things that have gone on in the last few years. So when I watch a movie like this, I'm really touched by the story itself and the things in it. Is the hope that um, through a movie like Wishman and also through the things that you've done for Flicks for Change, that you kind of want to put out kind of like into the ether, uh, kind of like a feeling more of hope and more of spirits and more of positivity to kind of like quell the the other end of that spectrum of kind of negativity because I think movies are, are a really good way to kind of to, to do that. Yeah. 
No, I, yeah, 100%. I think, you know, the more that we can put out the positive vibrations, we can raise the energy and uh, and then good things are happening. Um, you know, it, where you put your consciousness, that's often what you what you bring, what, what kind of draw, comes to you. Um, so, yeah, you know, putting... Um, Putting those positive um, messages and storylines out into the into the world is is yeah super important for me. So for everyone out there listening, September five, you can check out Wishman on the Wonder streaming platform. That's Wonder Watch, and like you said before, Andrew, forty percent of the proceeds from any rental or purchase of Wishman through Wonder Watch goes directly to Make a Wish Australia. So not only watching a movie that is um, will make you feel good, but it also participating in a real noble, real great um, charity in, in Make a Wish. And um, Andrew Steele, I just want to say thank you so very much for your time today. Congratulations with the film. I think it's really cool that now Australian audiences can watch this film because I know just looking online that it was on Netflix for some time in the States and had a really good, good positive impact. And I think we need that positive impact here as well. And just congrats to you. It's a it's a really great performance. Very charming. Very kind of like just really kind of engrossed engrossed me in. And um, it was good to see a, a story like this because I think and you know you mentioned before that people in Prescott did not know that Frank found and make a wish. I think that says something about his humility as a person. So it's really good to see that his um his story is out there and being told, and people know who he is, what he did, and what he stood for. So thank you so much for your time, and best of luck with the film's release. 100 matt i really appreciate your time and uh yeah keep doing you know, the good work that you're doing getting those those messages out there we appreciate it thank you for watching the matt's movie reviews channel please subscribe for more reviews podcast interviews and exclusive content also if you would like to request a review and support my work please join my patreon via the link in the description below